YouTube, what is up? Welcome back to the radar for Wrestling Studios. Here's Solo today, giving your Friday night SmackDown takeaways. We have one takeaway from the show that was all about Roman Reigns and Edge and build up into the Elimination Chamber happening this Sunday. So we have a few things to get into. We have a really big spot between Apollo turning heel on, on Big E and hurting him big time. Seth Rollins coming out talking about what happened last week after his return to SmackDown. So we got a lot of things to get into. Uh, but I do want to remind you guys that Saturday... At 2 p.m. Eastern Time, I'll be doing my live stream at WrestleManiac UK, our predictions for the Elimination Chamber. So make sure you tune into that live stream, get active in the chat there. Let us know what you guys think of the show and what's happening uh, with all the build up to Elimination Chamber. So stay tuned for that. If you're watching this video, please subscribe to the channel. Hit drop a like on this video and a comment in the comment section below. I want to hear you guys, your opinions on SmackDown. Do you think Roman is going to face Edge at WrestleMania? What do you think is going to happen at Elimination Chamber? All that good stuff. Continue to grow the community. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Notification bell, guys, when new videos drop. So Social media, you know, that pops out on the screen. Let's get right into it. One takeaway from Friday Night SmackDown. Friday Night SmackDown started off with Edge in the ring. Um, he's cutting a promo. Then he gets interrupted by, you know, Roman Reigns comes out. Have, they have a face-to-face. -face. Edge says that he, he sees that Ro Reigns is insecure and um, worried about, you know, edge and that edge needs he wants edge he feels like edge needs to pick him because his insecurities and he feels like he needs to, that gratification of edge picking him so he can feel like the main guy on the show there was an interesting spot here Sami Zayn would come out he would talk trash get super kicked by Jay Uso and then Roman Reigns would quietly walk up to edge whisper something in his ear and this is takeaway number one you see the issue be, you see them uh talking to each other behind me uh edge yeah, he would whisper something in Edge's ear. We don't know what it was. Um, and it'd be interesting to find out as to, you know, what's going to happen with that. Um, but it feels like Edge just has to pick Roman because there's not much else him going on with Drew McIntyre, right? It doesn't feel like a lot. Like, it doesn't feel as important if you were to pick Drew McIntyre over Edge, uh, over Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns right now is, is the main event. Everything he's saying is true, Roman Reigns, about him being the main event. You know, he's going to main event WrestleMania for like the fifth time. Um, you know, so it, I think I think they're just painting themselves into a corner where Edge has to pick Roman. It'll be interesting to see what happens at Elimination Chamber because whoever wins the Chamber for SmackDown faces Re Roman at the end of the night for the Universal Championship. So it should be interesting how that turns out. But it'll be, you know, the part where he walks up to Edge, whispers something in his ear. Uh, it's pretty interesting how that's going to play out. Let's see if we eventually hear what he said. Um, you know, it was pretty awesome, though, the, the the back and forth between the two. And I just feel like it has to happen. Throughout the night, you will see Edge talk to all the members of, you know, the Elimination Chamber match and talk trash. So, you know, and talk, you know, back and forth between uh, both guys. So um, there's a lot happening here, a lot of moving parts. And it just seems like Edge has... There's more momentum and it's more interesting if you were to choose Roman Reigns. I don't feel like there's a lot of interest in the Raw Championship, the WWE Championship at this moment, and for Edge to pick that. So I'm not a huge fan of the stuff on Raw, but this stuff is getting better on SmackDown. And Edge being there is helping out. But guys, that's takeaway number one of the night. The next thing on the show... We had Apollo Crews taking on Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke has been in the title picture for a little bit uh, with Big E, but he seems like a side piece to the main feud that's Apollo and Big E. The match would happen. You would have Nakamura getting the win here, and then Apollo Crews being extremely upset, attacking um, you know Nakamura after the match with the steps, bringing up the steps. Here comes you know um, Big E getting into his face, telling him to put him down. Then he attacks Big E, attacks Nakamura. Then you have the big spot where he drops the the steel steps on Big E from the inside of the ring to the out. Now it's it's it helps the fact that they don't have live fans so they can play this on TV. Obviously, Big E was not there on the ground when it happened, so he dropped it over the top, dropped it on top of Big E, and Big E got stretchered out. So Apollo with his full heel turn. Hopefully he joins Roman Reigns sometime soon. They never really like played up on that Roman Reigns uh, interaction between the two. Maybe they will now after the full heel turn. Uh, so it looks like you know they're gonna eventually have this you know feud at um, maybe WrestleMania or Fastlane. Uh, he's not gonna make it to Elimination Chamber because he was hurt. And he got stretchered out. After this, you would have Big E being stretchered out, and uh, Seth Rollins would come out and you know warn Cesaro that he'll pay for you know ruining the return. Remember last week, all the superstars left the ring when you know Seth Rollins showed his true colors, and he hasn't changed. He came out, did the same thing he always does, and then afterwards, you had Cesaro, the last person to stay there, say some disparaging stuff about Seth Rollins. So Seth Rollins attacked him and hurt him. It's like Rollins versus Cesaro is the way they're going to go for WrestleMania between the two. It just it seems like there's no really other way they're going 
to go with it. Cesaro seems like right now kind of technically the favorite to win the Elimination Chamber match, but lose to Reigns, obviously. So we'll see what happens with that. But um, it feels like Reigns, I mean, Rollins versus, you know, the Cesaro at Mania might be the way they're going to go with it. Next thing they show is the Riot Squad versus Natalia and Tamina. This wasn't a good match. Tama uh, Tamina and Natalia get the win here. And then you have Billy Kay, you know, kind of causing the, 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 the loss for Riot Squad and trying to join Tamina and Natalia. She gets dropped, super kicked by Tamina. So that's pretty much all there is to there. Uh, she's the most entertaining thing of all this Billy Kay. She continues to be entertaining. Uh, next thing in the show was um, the Bailey Ding Dong talking show. Uh, she was there. She had her guest. Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, the tag team champions. They got interrupted by Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. And then would lead to a match. Also, Reg Reginald came out too as well. He seems to be playing, like, trying to be friendly with Sasha Banks and helping her out. But I think there's some type of other thing behind all that. Um, but then the match ended up happening. It was Reginald, Sasha Banks, and Bianca Belair versus Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, and Bailey. And Reginald got in there with Nia Jax. It was pretty interesting stuff. Up for a fallaway slam. And you had Sasha Banks drop kick Reginald in the back. And it would cause the pin for Reginald. So Reginald got the win here. It's weird, but they did set up that it would be Sasha, Bianca versus Nia, and Shayna for the tag team championships at Elimination Chamber. I kind of felt like they were going that way with what happened last week. So I was right about that. They're going to have the match next week. It's just weird to see Reginald getting so involved with the women's matches and being in them and then him kind of being friendly, friendly, or trying to be nice to uh, Sasha Banks. And then you have an issue between him and Carmella backstage where she's talking about how she's upset that he's out there making friends with Sasha and then throws the wine in his face. So we'll see what happens with that. I think it could be all be a setup, uh, but we'll see what eventually happens. You had Ray and Dominic next taking on Alpha Academy, Otis, and Chad Gable. Ray and Dominic got the win by disqualification. And then you have, you know, Otis attacking Ray afterwards, splashing him, stuff like that. So it seems like Ray might be a little injured from there. But, you know, we'll see what happens. It feels, you know, Otis turning heel basically in this, in this run. Um, we'll see what him and Gable do as a heel tag team. I, I like the fact that Ray and Dominic are getting tag team matches in there, and hopefully they may get, make a run at the tag team titles. Maybe being a multi-team tag team match at WrestleMania, pretty interesting. I would love to see Ray and Dominic win those tag team titles. It would be pretty awesome. Uh, next thing on the show was the final match, six-man tag. Kevin Owens, Daniel Bryan Cesaro versus Jey Uso, King Corbin, Sami Zayn. WWE loves to do this. When they have multi-man matches, the go-home show, what they'll do is put every man in a match, heels versus baby faces. They'll do it all the time, and that's just a, a, a you know a general MO for WWE. When it comes to multi-man matches, ladder matches, Royal Rumbles, Battle Royals, uh, anything, you know, Elimination Chambers, they put everybody in the ring before and have them in tag team matches, split them up by bit heels and baby faces. Um... But in the end, Brian gets the the win, making Sami Zayn tap out. So a little bit of momentum for Daniel Bryan there. I thought they were gonna go with Cesaro because he's won you know matches and he's probably the hottest guy in terms of momentum and win streak winning streak in SmackDown. So I thought they were gonna go that route, but they went with Daniel Bryan winning, which is fine. He makes uh, Sami Zayn tap out. But then afterwards, you have the uh, everybody doing their move on everybody, and it comes to the end where. Kevin Owens gets super kicked by Jey Uso. Then Edge, who's on commentary, comes out, spears Jey Uso, and then he will get speared by Roman Reigns. And this is the highlight of the night. You would have Reigns stand tall over Edge after spearing him. So I feel like all signs just point to Reigns Edge at WrestleMania. It makes the most sense. It's the most logical match to have at WrestleMania. Edge versus McIntyre is not interesting at this point, moment in time. And Roman Reigns, the hottest thing in the brand, you got to give him the biggest match. And the biggest match right now is him versus Edge, the Royal Rumble winner. So it makes a lot of sense. And that's the way the show ended. So everybody hit their finish on each other, back and forth, back and forth. And then you had Edge getting speared by Roman to end the show out. So we'll see what happens going into you know Elimination Chamber. But that's the review for, for SmackDown, the one takeaway. We ha I have for the show. Uh, remember to tune in Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, my live stream of WrestleManiac UK. We're going to drop our predictions for the Elimination Chamber show, so make sure you check that out. I uh, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Remember to like and subscribe. Comment in, in the comment section below what you guys thought of SmackDown, what you guys think of Elimination Chamber. Do you think it's going to be Reigns Edge at WrestleMania? Let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. My friend, it's my brother. Not the job.